Roblox Raycasting Made Easy. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I have something special for you. We're responding to a viewer's request on Raycasting. In our tutorial on C-Frame Math, a viewer requested. Can you do a tutorial on Raycasting please? Thank you. Raycasting does sound like an interesting topic for a tutorial. In Roblox, Raycasting involves sending an invisible ray from a starting point in a specified direction and a specified range to detect objects in its path. Or it can also be used to measure the distance to a target. This should be a very interesting tutorial. Let's now get right to it. Here I am inside Roblox Studio. Let us first set up a scenario to use ray casting. So I'm gonna add a part to my workspace. Let us name this part, part A. And I'm gonna change the size to five comma five comma five. So it's a cube. I'll put it here, move back a little bit. Let's change the color to red. And we want to give this part a face. So I'm going to go to my toolbox using my own creation. I'm going to go to decals and I'm going to look for my face. I have put the face on the part. If you like, you want to make sure that your face is facing the front. So go to the uh, properties here. And if you see the face property, it should say front. Next thing I want to do, I want to select my part A here, and I want to do a control D to duplicate. We're going to name the new part, part B. And let's change the color of the new part to something else, blue, let's say. And I'm going to move part B out exactly 25 studs or approximately 25 studs from the original part. We can go ahead and remove the decal from part B. We don't need it. It doesn't need to have a face. And now let's take a look to see how we can use ray casting for part A to be able to find part B. Let us now go to our service script service. We're going to add a script. Let's name our script ray casting. And in your script, let's start with declaring part A local part A equal to workspace dot part a remember in ray casting you must have an origin a starting point so let's declare our starting point we're going to say local let's name it origin equal to the position of part a another thing ray casting requires is to have a direction and a range so let's declare local let's name it direction correct my typo here to be the look vector of part A. Part A dot C frame dot look vector. So now we have the direction where part A is looking at. That's why we put the face on part A so we know which way part A is looking at. And to specify the range, remember the look vector is a unit. So if you want it to look down 100 units, all you have to do is multiply the look vector by 100. So it's gonna see something that is 100 units away from it. If you want your part to see something just 10 units away, you multiply it by 10 instead of 100. Let's now go and cast that invisible ray. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna say local result equal to workspace colon raycast. And our raycast API requires two parameters, the origin and the direction. And there you have it. That is all there is to raycasting, if you like you can come down here and print the result. The result is going to show you what it finds in the path for the specified range. Let us now run test and take a look. And also, I need to open up my output window to see the results. And there it is. Raycast result, part B. So it saw part B, and these are some of the properties of part B. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my part B. I'm going to do a control D to duplicate. Let's name our new part, part C. And I'm going to move part C out another 25 units. So here part A is the origin. Part B is 25 units away from part A. And part C is another 25 units away from part B, which means Part C is 50 units away from part A. 
let's run test again and take a look see what it sees so my part a still sees part b because part b is in front of it you can see right here it says it sees part b if i go and delete part b here and run test again now you can see that it sees part c so basically it sees the first part in its path now instead of 100 units i'm going to change this to 30 units run test and take a look it says neo it does not see any object in front of it right now that's because we're giving it a 30 units range but this part is 50 units away so it does not see any object in front of it but if i go back to studio and i hit the undo button to bring back part b now we run test again you see it sees part b because part b is 25 units from part a and part a can see 30 units away in front of it so it does see part b in front of it essentially this is how ray casting can be used to detect objects within a specified range and a line of sight now how can you tell when something is found it is in the result here so if it returns an object in the result, then that object was found. If it doesn't return anything, if it returns nil, then it means no object found. The result here does include a lot of different information. So let's say instead of printing this result, we're going to come down here and we're going to print out different information in the result. The result contains the information on which object is found, the position of that object, the distance of that object from the origin, the material of the object, and the normal vector of the object. On the other hand, if result is nil, means no object found, we're just going to warn no object found. Let's run test and take a look. And here it is. So it found part B. This is the position. This is the distance between part B and the origin. This is the material of the object and this here is the normal vector of the object let's now take a look at another example so we're going to go to our ray casting script we're going to do a control d to duplicate and i'm just gonna disable this first ray casting script and i'll rename the second script to ray casting 2. i'll remove this one we're going to go to our ray casting 2 script here Remember the first one is disable, and in your rate casting two script, just insert the following lines. In this example, we're trying to get the direction when we have two different objects. So for example, here we have the origin, which is part A. We have the destination object, which is part B. So destination one is part B. The second destination is part C. And what I wanna do is I wanna go to our workspace here, and I wanna move these parts around to give it different distances from part A. Let's go back to the script. So again, we have the origin. We have destination one, which is part B. Destination two is part C. And this is our direction. So when you have two different parts, you can get the ray direction by subtracting the origin from the destination. In this first case, we're trying to get the ray direction of our first destination, which is part B. Here we're casting the ray from the origin. We're giving it the ray direction, which we got from here. And here we're printing the result. We're printing the ray direction. And also we're printing all the information from the object that we found. We're basically doing the same thing over here with destination number two. So I'm a little lazy, but if you like, you can create a function and you just pass in the parameter, the destination, instead of recopying the code over again. But in this case, I'm kind of lazy right now, so I'm just copying the same code over and I changed destination one to destination number two. With that said, let's now run test and take a look. I'm gonna open up my output window and let's see what we got. So here it found part B. This here is the ray direction of part B, I believe. Let's take a look. So we're printing the result which is the first line here part b and then we're printing the ray direction of part b the part that it found and then we're printing all the information from part b so this is 
the object. This is the position of the object. This here is the distance of the object from the origin. We got the material of the object and we have the normal vector of the found object. We also found part C. Again, this is the ray direction from the origin going to part C. And here are the information of the found object. This is part C. This is the position, the distance, the material, and the normal vector. So in case you have two different objects and you need to find the ray direction, you can do it this way. And this here is your ray direction. Just out of curiosity, I want to try something. So here you see we have the ray direction. What I want to do is I want to print the ray direction magnitude. I'm going to copy and paste it down here. You see, this is the problem when you're duplicating code. When you make a change, you got to change at multiple places. If you have a function, you only need to change it inside the function. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to see if the ray direction magnitude is going to be exactly the same as the distance from the origin to the object. This should be interesting. Let's run tests and take a look. Will they be identical? What do you think? Let's take a look. All right, so here we have found part B. This here is the ray direction. This here is the magnitude of the ray direction. It is 30 units away from the origin. And where is the distance? The distance is 26 units away, almost 27. So they are not identical. There's a three unit differences between the two. Let's take a look at the second part that we found here. We found part C and this is the ray direction. This is the magnitude is 90 and the distance is 87. So same over here, the distance is about three units less than the magnitude of the ray direction. Same in the first case, the distance is about three units less than the magnitude of the ray direction. Very interesting. In ray casting, you can use ray cast parameters to define a list of things to exclude, such as a list of objects or to ignore water or collision groups. In this next example, I will show you how to exclude different objects inside your workspace. So let's first, I want to rearrange these cubes back to the way they were before. I'm going to, hopefully I can do an undo here to bring them back. Yep. Okay, so now they're lining up, same as the way they were before. So re remember the way we had it before? This here, the origin, can only see part B, and it cannot see part C if part B is blocking part C. Now let's go back to our script number one, the first script. So I'm going to disable script number two, and I'm going to go back to the first script. I'm going to enable our raycasting script. And in your script, just insert the following lines. Let me go down here. I'm going to undo the comment here, and we can remove these over here. We don't need the extra information of the result. All right, so let's take a look at the script. First, we're declaring part A. We're declaring the origin to be the position of part A. This is our ray direction. It's 30 units away. Let's change this to 100 units. The range is 100. And let's take a look at the inserted code here. So we're declaring part B. And we're creating this new ray cast parameters here. We're setting the filter type to exclude. And here we're defining a table of all the objects that we want to exclude. So in this case, we're excluding part B. Now remember, our range is 100. So if we run test, this part here, the origin, should be able to see part B and part C. But in this case, it should see part B first. Without the extra parameter, it's going to see part B because that is the first part that it's going to see. But since we're excluding part B, so this part is excluded, it should be able to see the next part in the path, which is part C. Let us now run test and take a look. We're going to open up the output window and let's take a look. It sees part B. Ah, there's one more parameter we need to add in. Remember we're defining the uh, ray cast parameters here, but we need to include that in the result when we're casting 
the ray. Just gonna insert that there. Let me stop this first. And now let's run test again and take a look. And there you have it. It sees part C because part B is excluded. So that is how you declare objects that are to be excluded from the ray casting. And lastly, we're gonna do a script that's gonna detect objects in front of a player. So let's go and disable all these scripts here. I'm gonna disable my ray casting script here. And now let's go to our starter player, starter player scripts. We're gonna add a local script and in your local script, insert the following lines. We're declaring the player. We're waiting for the character to load. We're waiting for the character head to load because our character head is gonna be the origin of our ray casting. Here we're declaring the ray cast parameters so that we can exclude a bunch of things. So here we're excluding the character itself and also we want to exclude the base plate. We don't want the ray cast to see the base plate, which is the ground that the characters is walking on. We have an infinite while loop. Maybe I'm gonna change this to task weight. Our ray cast origin is gonna be the head of the character and our ray direction. Again, it's gonna be the look vector. So depending on which way your character is looking, we multiply it by the range, which is our character is gonna be able to see 100 studs away from the character. We're casting the ray and then we're checking the result. See if we found anything, we're gonna print the name of the object that is found. If nothing is found, we're just gonna print no hit detected. All set. We're gonna open up our output window and now let's play test and take a look. All right, so no hit detected so far. You can see it's running so fast. And then let me see if we can find anything. You know what, it, it's running too fast, but it found a trunk here, which is the trunk of the tree. It found another trunk here. Let me see, I'm gonna go over here. It found another trunk here. Found another trunk. Let me go to something else over here. So right here, it doesn't see anything yet, right over here. It saw part C when we were turning around, but I wanna go to the statue here. It still doesn't see anything yet because the distance from here to here is more than a hundred. Let me keep going. Oh, there it is. It found the render mesh, which are these two parts over here. And now I'm gonna go back to my part ABC here. Let's see, I'm gonna turn this way. It saw part C over here. I'm gonna go this way. Let's see if it sees anything else. And there it is, it saw part A and part B. If I face this way, it's not gonna see anything because there is nothing in front of me with maybe the exception of these render meshes. If I face this way, now there's nothing in front of me. And there you have it. That is how you use ray casting in Roblox. Everyone, hope you have enjoyed the video and find it helpful. Thank you all for watching and we will see you again in our next tutorial. Take care everyone.